Hello, and welcome to PIFM at Work. So this is the first in a series of installments highlighting some cutting-edge applications using the Vista IR microscope for molecular Vista. My name is Derek, and in this episode I will demonstrate nanoscale chemical imaging of silicon strain on FinFET structures. And so over the next few minutes, we will cover an introduction to the sample, followed with imaging and analysis highlights. So without further delay, let's get started. Okay, now for some details about the silicon strain sample of interest. This sample was provided by researchers at NIST and was manufactured by Ximatech. Now, due to the nanoscale features of the sample, it will provide a good test for near-field optical resolution. A reference to near-field here basically means that we'll be imaging below the diffraction limit. Now, because there is a spectral shift in silicon oxide as a function of stress, the sample will provide a means to determine the nanoscale chemical information and at what spatial resolutions the chemistry can be observed. Now this sample is composed of silicon germanium and silicon oxide and it's constructed in such a way that there are well-defined locations of the silicon germanium and the silicon oxide as demonstrated in image C. Now the stress in the silicon oxide arises from a lattice size mismatch or difference between the silicon germanium and the silicon oxide. Now, because the atomic lattice spacing is different, the silicon oxide stresses itself to meet the lattice size of the silicon germanium. And that will be the source of the stress that we observe. And so for this imaging, we'll look at various spacings to get an idea of how the stress falls off as a function of distance from the silicon germanium interface. Switching over to VistaScan. Now, VistaScan is our image acquisition software, so it directly interfaces with the Vista IR system. If you look on the right-hand side, you'll see an image of the system. Uh, on the bottom right, we have the IR light source. Uh, that source is then piped into the main body of the microscope and then up to the AFM head. So at the AFM head here, about the middle of the image. Uh, that light is then further uh, directed towards an off-axis parabolic mirror inside the AFM head. And that then focuses the light onto the end of the tip. Above that is a top optical view, and this is allowing us to visualize where the probe is and where the sample locations are of interest. So let's go ahead and install the sample. And to do that, I'm gonna go ahead and lift the top optics up and then get that sample installed. Okay, I've installed the sample. And now in the top view, you can see the sample surface, uh, the AFM cantilever here protruding out to the left. And then it's looking over this area called the fin pitch uh, label on the sample. Now, this is a little different than the SEM uh, micrographs that uh, I showed in the sample description. But what's better about this region is that we'll actually have varying pitches of silicon germanium and silicon oxide in the same sample area. So this will really give us a chance to look at how that stress changes as a function of distance, all uh, in the same field of view. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is we want to align our IR light to the end of the probe. And so I'll do that by engaging with the sample and then scanning uh, the parabolic mirror. And what we'll get is a profile of the laser spot at which where we can then park the tip in the center of that uh, laser spot. So let's go ahead and engage, scan, Okay, and so you can see that laser spot here. And so now what I can do is position uh, the mirror such that it hits the, uh, the tip at that, at that spot. Okay, with the light source aligned to the tip, uh, what we can now do is switch over to our sample scanner where we'll raster scan uh, the sample underneath the AFM probe. And uh, we'll start with an area of about 10 microns. This will give us a nice uh, lay of the land. And we'll uh, tune our laser to 1122 wave numbers. This is a, a line which we'll be able to observe the silicon oxide stress. And so now we'll go ahead and engage with the sample and start that scan. And you'll see on the top we have our topography, our forward and backwards, and then our uh, PIFM channel coming in on the bottom. So you can see the signal strength coming in um, where we have different line pitches uh, observable in the topography and then we'll see uh, different intensities in that 1122 line in the PIFM channel. So I'm going to go ahead and let this scan. It's going to take about seven or so minutes and then we'll come back and analyze uh, what we see. Okay so the image is finished 
And uh, so let's take a minute to uh, kind of reflect on what we see here. So the topography is showing us that the uh, pitch spacing for the silicon germanium on the left hand side of the image is tight so that it's much smaller than what we're seeing on the right hand side of the image and the pifm correspondingly is also showing us that when that pitch is uh, small that the, um, the uh, silicon oxide doesn't have a chance to relax so we don't see a strong signal at the 1122 wave number uh, that we expect so if we're just looking at unstressed silicon oxide we'll see a uh, decent uh, um, signal strength at that 1122 wave number. And so here what you're seeing is when we get in those really tight spacings that uh, that um, stress is high and that wave number doesn't recover. So now let's go in for a little bit more detailed analysis. Let's zoom in to this region here. So what we can do is capture um, a bunch of the fine structure, one big path uh, and one kind of medium path, if you will, uh, in between the two. So let's go ahead and start that image, and then we'll return when it's uh, finished and do some uh, spectral analysis in that field of view. Okay, now the zoomed in image is finished, and now you can get a little better view of, of how that uh, silicon oxide stress is uh, being affected by the silicon germanium lines. And so you can really see how it, it falls off as a function of distance, and when the spacing is too tight, uh, it just cannot fully relax. So now to get a better idea of what's happening uh, spectrally, let's take a series of spectra across uh, you know, this particular uh, gap that we have in our, our field of view. So I'm going to come over to our spectroscopy tab, and I'm going to define a path uh, that you see here. So um, this path is going to go from the tight spacing over to the larger spacing, and we'll take uh, one spectrum uh, at about one second uh, each, and then we'll go across uh, for 60 uh, uh, full spectrum. So let's go ahead and get that started. And now it's going to start at the beginning. And one, one second, and go on to the next. So while this completes, uh, I'll go ahead and let this finish. We'll move over to the uh, SurfaceWorks package where we can then analyze it. Okay, moving over to the SurfaceWorks package now, we can look at the three images we acquired during our imaging session today. Uh, the first one uh, is just that PIFM scan of the laser spot. So that was something we were doing just to do initial alignment of the IR spot to the tip. Uh, then we did this large field scan uh, where we were looking at about a 10 micron area uh, over various pitches of silicon germanium and silicon oxide. And then finally we zoomed in to a region where we saw uh, two basically different pitches, uh, a large pitch and some small pitch, to look to see how um, the stress was being um, affected at the local level and then what kind of uh, spectral uh, changes we could see to identify how the stress was, was affecting the spectra. So what we did at the very end is we took this line scan of uh, spectra. And so let me come over to uh, that result. And that's what we see here. So this is the PIFM image, and then this was the trace of um, a line of spectra that we took. So we have took 60. Um, starting down here at the very bottom is our first one. And these are spread out so that we can get a sense of, um, you know, looking at them as, in terms of how they evolve. So the, if you remember from the image here, uh, we went over about two uh, really fine pitched, and then we went over a really big uh, pitch, and then we went over a part of another uh, big pitch. And so if we look at the spectra, we can see that the 1122, um, the individual spectra are not changing much. Uh, when we're in that high stress region, right? We get a little bit of it wanting to kind of come up, um, but mostly the 1122 peak is suppressed. As we start to get to those larger bumped areas, you really start to see that peak dominate and it starts to come up. So in this region here, uh, we're going through that large, large uh, peak and you can kind of see it as um, this section here, that 1122 peak really starting to shine. Then we go through an area where it drops down again. And that part we expect uh, right in here in this middle section around uh, spectrum 45. And then we start to rise again as we get towards uh, spectrum 60, which is over here in our last one, right? And so then you really start to see that 1122 come back up. So you're seeing the peak, peak uh, you know, diminish as a function of stress and really recover uh, when it is relaxed. 
So with that, I'd like to conclude our imaging session today on the silicon germanium sample. Hopefully, this gives you some insight uh, to the power of the PIFM technique and uh, this particular application uh, for silicon strain. Uh, if you have applications of your own that you're thinking about, uh, please do contact us and uh, see if there's a good fit for uh, your application and our technique. So from all of us here at Molecular Vista, we wanted to thank uh, Aaron Wood at NIST for the sample and allowing us to explore this new application of silicon strain. Uh, if you have any questions or would like more information about our Vista IR system, please feel free to contact us at info at molecularvista.com. Also feel free to subscribe to this channel. We uh, plan to do more of these video shorts in the near future, and you can learn about new applications and new developments with our instruments.